Aloha and welcome back to another video. I'll be doing another pickups, polls, and reviews, but I'm sorry, these videos, I don't think I'm going to be able to get these out on Wednesday. I keep saying Wednesday, that's the day that I get my pickups, but there's problems in the sense of trying to find time to actually shoot these videos, and even if I am able to find what I want at the first comic book shop, which is out of town by the way, I have to drive all the way back on Wednesday, shoot the video, do my editing. If there's issues with editing, that will take extra time, more so than normal, and then on top of that it takes six to seven hours, yeah, six to seven hours to actually upload the video because my internet is so slow, so slow. I live out in the middle of nowhere. So Thursday is probably what when these videos are gonna come out. This one might even come out late Friday, or early Friday morning, I mean, because of the upload process, but I'm praying for Thursday, and I'm gonna be shooting for Thursday now, so I'm sorry about that, but I, I do the best I can, I guess is my point. Um, but yeah, this is, Batman, the next Batman, which is a limited series. This is the first of four, and it's part of the Future State, Init Future State Initiative, which is a special event that DC is doing where all their main heroes are having short limited series that go over kind of Elseworlds stories and unique plots that wouldn't necessarily be at home in the main series, uh, the main Wonder Woman series, or the main Batman series, or the main Flash series. So in the next Batman, it goes over who Batman would be, who's gonna, who would be the next Batman after Bruce Wayne. And for the Shazam Future State book, for example, it goes over what, ha uh, a evil version of Shazam, and how people coming together to try to stop Shazam. So, stuff like that. Here's the back here. This is actually a limited edition cover, a variant cover, you would say, you could say, but it's still, it's still Batman, um, despite what the cover looks like, um, despite the cover's advertisement of the new Wonder Woman movie. I like this art here. I talk about that a lot. It's, it's pretty decent art. I like the colors, mostly. Um, it reminds me of Batman Year One, which is what I'm actually reading currently, believe it or not. And right after that, I'll be reading this. So by next week, hopefully, I'll actually be able to tell you guys what I thought of this issue and the issue I'm going to be showing after this. It goes over more than just Batman's story, however. Each of these Future State books go of each of these Batman Future State books, the next Batman is what it's called, goes over more than just Batman, but goes over other stories that are in Gotham City. So, yeah. You have that nice kind of cel-shaded look that uh, that's in year one, for example, which I told you about that I'm reading. And I actually can, I might review that sooner or later, so you might be seeing that. This is issue two of the next, oh, issue, yeah, issue two of the next Batman. This came out literally yesterday, I think, right? But Wednesday. And it almost looks like the art changed, interestingly enough. I wonder if it's a different artist. I'm not sure. You have that new suit. And yeah, I don't have much else to say, but look forward to me talking about these next week. Two weeks ago, I showed off cr the first crossover. I didn't know much about it, Donny Cates. He does the newest Thor series that I'm quite enjoying, and I showed this off and talked about how I'm excited to read it and tell you guys what I think. And I'm ready to tell you guys what I think. Crossover is about superhero, the superhero world merging with the real world. And it's a few, I forget, yeah, a few years back. It says 2017 up there, if you can see that. A few years back, the superhero world merged with the real world, you would say, or superheroes came out of comic books, I would, uh, you could say. And it was viewed, un, unlike what you would think, it was, it was chaos, chaos. And... It's viewed realistically about if superheroes were in the real world, this is what would happen. And there's a lot of kind of, you could say, commentary about how 
they hate anybody that's from the comic book world, whether they're good or bad, whether they're causing destruction or not causing destruction. It's very segregated, and there's a lot of racism towards people from comic books. Um, so that's all basically the gist of what's going on in this first issue. And I liked it, but it didn't actually grab me right off the bat. And interestingly enough, the Thor series that I'm reading by Donny Cates also is very similar in the sense that it didn't grab me right off the bat. But I'm hoping, just like with the Thor series, how it started picking up speed and is actually really good now, but it took a while for it to pick up speed if it took a few issues. I'm hoping that's the same crossover. So if it is, I'll know soon because I picked up issue three. I gotta find issue two though. So. I might not be covering it this week, uh, or next week, because I don't have issue two, but when I get that, or matter not if I, I'll just read it online or something, I'll, I do want to talk about this, I, I do want to talk about how I'm feeling about the series once I read more, but yeah. And the art's definitely, you know, good, I like the colors here, and you got some cool rain shots there, don't exactly know what's going on. Got to get issue two before I can read that, but yeah, excited to talk to you guys about that. Here is Daredevil 25. I don't want to flip through too much of this because there's actually quite a bit of spoilers, but in this series I'm really enjoying. I actually have a video plan uh, uh, going over my thoughts of the Daredevil series so far. Really good, highly recommended. And after jumping into comic books, this is like by far like the best thing I've read so far after jumping into comic books these last few months and I and I'm not even like crazy about Daredevil I just heard that it was good so I started reading it and, yeah people are right you know it's it's definitely worth reading so and I'll be taught and I'll you'll see that video soon hopefully eventually uh, maybe next week I, I don't know exactly I'm not gonna I shouldn't make any promises I've actually read this digitally and I want to talk about it but I picked it up because I I'm kind of, I'm picking, I'm reading through stuff on Marvel Unlimited, but I also want to pick up the stuff that I'm reading as well, and I'm all, it's all over the place, but um, this is a part one of two, I believe, right, a two-part story arc that talks about Thor's hammer. Thor's hammer is actually getting heavier, interestingly enough, interestingly enough after he became king, and he's now king of Asgard. Yeah, yeah, part, part one of Hammerfall. Of, of two and his hammer has been has been getting heavier and heavier for him but interestingly enough has been getting lighter and lighter for everyone else and mortals and you know other people including a few a few, few people that you wouldn't suspect I'll just say are actually able to hold Thor's hammer now which is just crazy and he's doing a test by sending it to earth and there's a lot of carryover from other issues of Thor talking to um, different characters and a lot of development of the story arc that's going, going to come next after this or came next after this, which I'll be showing off in the next issue. And yeah, this Thor series I'm really digging so far. It's The art's good. Uh, this isn't actually... It, what's interesting is, as far as I know, it switches between... It's been switching between two artists, if I'm correct. Maybe, I'm, maybe it's more than two, but it's been switching artists a little bit back and forth um, just like the daredevil series did and it hops between this kind of i don't want to say uh I, I don't know this kind of pastel more um artistic kind of look compared to other issues which have a more trying to find an issue that has a more realistic look here but as you can see the art's a bit different here it switches kind of between that and this more kind of realistic look. Uh, not not to say it's realistic, but you get my point, right? It goes between more um, cell shaded and more real. This isn't the best example, I guess, but either way, let me switch over to issue 10 of Thor. And I, I showed this off two weeks ago, I believe, and I'm really liking this story arc so far. This is part two of a six-part arc, known as Prey, as you can see here. And believe it or not, Dr. Don Blake, the alter ego of Thor that I talked about in my Thor Essentials Volume 1 review, which if you haven't seen that, click up there. Uh, Dr. Don Blake 
is was trapped in a alternative dimension, a different realm for all this time. And finally, he's been let loose, or he got loose, I should say, and he went mad from being stuck in this dimension for so long, because that was kind of the question that I imagine many of us had. I didn't, because I haven't. The only, I haven't read much outside of the original Jack Kirby Thor run. So I didn't exactly have, I mean, I kind of had this question, but I imagine many people were quite, were wondering what happened to Dr. John Blake, you know, once Thor later on, I don't know if this is spoilers, but later on, uh, Thor didn't stop turning into Don Blake in, and stopped becoming that human form. So people wondered what happened to Dr. John Blake, if he just ceased to exist or if what what Thor, what Odin did to him, but um, yeah, he put him in an alternative, basically pocket dimension, and but all those years of being in this pocket dimension, he slowly went mad for different reasons. I'm not going to go into because you know details, right? <laughs> but nonetheless, the point was is that now he's finally out and he's seeking revenge for what happened to him, and it's crazy. It's crazy to see that the Thor series that I started reading, the the first Thor series I read was the first ever Thor series, you know, the first 60s run, and then I jumped to the newest series and happened to jump in at the right time. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I It almost seems almost perfect at the time that I'm jumping in at, and that wasn't intentional, but... And also picked up, and that was those were my thoughts on issue 10 that I showed off two weeks ago. This issue, issue 11, I'll be talking about next week, hopefully. And this is part three, as you can see. And I'm not going to show much of this, um, both because of spoilers and because I don't have, really have much to say. Great art, as you can see. And that's all I have to show you guys for this week. If you liked it, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, then you also know what to do. And tell me why. Tell me how I can improve. I got a tripod. This The camera shouldn't be as shaky this time compared to past videos because it's sitting on a tripod now. So, yeah, I'm trying to improve, trying to do better. And, yeah, but if, I, if I'm not or if there's different recommendations you have of different things I can do to improve or different videos you'd like to see, tell me in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Aloha.